Hey, and welcome back to the Vibrant House Show. I'm Dr. Shannon Pierce, and today we're going to talk about menopause and perimenopause and all the things. This is a hefty topic. As I was making notes for what I wanted to cover today, I was like, there is no way we're going to get all of this talked about in one episode. So this will probably have to be a multiple episode series, but I'm going to get through some of the main things with you guys today, because I know this is a big topic. Number one, all women are eventually going to go through perimenopause and menopause. So whether you're there right now or not, this is valuable information. Plus the way you get a really pleasant menopause experience is by proactively balancing your hormones and being healthy before you get there. So even if you're not in menopause or perimenopause yet, you still want to think about the things we're going to talk about today because it's how you're really going to protect yourself from having some of the terrible things that go along with menopause. So let's dive into it. Comments when you jump on, say hi, tell me what you want to learn about today. Um, I'm going to open up my chat so I can see any comments as they come through. If you're live or on the replay, let me know. And then if you have comments um, live or on the replay, I'll come back and answer any of them as we go. So Let's dive into it. We're going to talk about all the different potentials when it comes to perimenopause and menopause, both naturally or whether it's induced or hysterectomy. We're going to talk about all of those different changes. Um, but first, let's talk about a few things that I think are not well understood about menopause. For example, we send out the email reminders with the topics that I'm going live. And I had multiple women respond back and be like, oh, I'm through menopause. I'm past that phase of life. So this doesn't apply to me. Or I wish I would have heard that 10 years ago. Let's be really clear. This information, knowing your hormones, knowing how to support your body is relevant at every single age. Spoiler, you don't just go through menopause and then you're no longer there. You transition to post-menopause which is just as important to maintain balance and the things we're gonna talk about today, because if you don't, it becomes things like heart disease, stroke, dementia, Alzheimer's, very significant issues that a lot of women are dealing with in their older years are directly related to some of the things we're gonna talk about now. So there is never a time, never an age. You can be 16, you can be 65, you can be 85. You need to know how to balance your body and how to properly support perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause. Okay. So regardless of your age, this is for you. Um, and then people will say, oh, well, I've had a hysterectomy. So that doesn't apply to me. Or I had my ovaries removed. So I don't have any hormones. That's just not true. I'm going to show you guys today at different phases of life, there will be different appropriate levels of hormones, right? Somebody at 65 doesn't need to have the same hormones as somebody at 25, but there is a healthy normal hormone range for every phase of life. And you need to know that and you need to know what to do to protect and support that so you can be the healthiest possible. So let's throw all that off the table right now. This information is for every single woman, no matter what your age is, but we will specifically talk about that perimenopause menopause phase today. And then I'll bring in some other phases in some other series. So let's get to the nitty gritty. What is perimenopause and what is menopause? what's normal, what's not normal. So in case you don't know, because I don't feel like it's really taught that well, perimenopause is the phase before menopause. So we have our more fertile years when you're a cycling female, that's pre-menopause, that for most women will go up until about their mid forties. That's when you're having a normal cycle. That's when you're fertile. That's when you can get pregnant. You're ovulating on a regular basis. That's pre-menopause. Perimenopause is the time when your hormones start to fluctuate. So naturally, your hormones are supposed to start coming down in that perimenopausal phase. That's normal. Now, we want them to come down gently and naturally. We don't want them tanking. We don't want some high and some low. We don't want imbalances. We want a nice, gentle decline as you're getting closer to menopause. But that perimenopausal phase can last a long time. Really average for most people, perimenopause starts in your mid 40s and typically doesn't end until the average age of true menopause is 51. So some women can be in that perimenopausal phase for almost 10 years and that's normal. But that means that is 10 years of your life that you better know how to properly support your hormones. And also in that perimenopause, so between your kind of early to mid 40s up into 51, 52, 
is the absolute best time to balance your hormones, take good care of your adrenal glands and work on all of the things we're about to talk about so that you can have a healthy transition into menopause. We're going to go over some of the normal or common symptoms that happen in menopause. And I will tell you, women only have a really hard time transitioning into menopause when they're going through it with already imbalanced hormones and adrenals. That is the key. Some women have no problem going into menopause. There are cultures where menopause is celebrated and it's not a bad thing. Women are happy to get there because they don't have their cycles anymore and they go through it really easily because they have balance in their body prior to getting to menopause, okay? So if you are in your early 40s, now is the time to start thinking about how you're gonna properly manage the things we talk about today so that you have a really nice transition. Now, if you're in menopause and you're struggling and you're like, this is the worst, it is not too late. Start incorporating some of the things we're gonna talk about and it will absolutely help. And if you're post-menopausal, but you're still struggling with some of the symptoms we're gonna talk about, it is still not too late. You likely still have some hormone deficiencies or some adrenal issues that you can absolutely work on safely and naturally to get you the best quality of life at any age. So perimenopause, perfect time to start working on your hormones and your adrenals, to start getting things balanced, to set up for menopause. The average natural age of menopause is 51. Most women, that's about the time that you're going to transition. To truly be in menopause, it has to be at least 12 months, one full year without having a cycle. So just going three or four months or six months or eight months and you have another cycle that would still put you more in perimenopause. So most of the research says 12 to 24 months with no cycle would put you into true menopause after that 50, 51 years of age. If that is happening earlier than that, people who are going into early menopause in their 40s, typically it's not true menopause. It is a hormone deficient induced menopause, which is something that you can correct and work on. Typically that has more to do with deficient hormones and not actually transitioning into menopause. So you really do want your goal to be healthy cycles through that perimenop uh, perimenopausal phase until about 51. That's the goal. If you keep your body healthy, that's what it should be doing for you. So let's go over some symptoms that women have just kind of accepted that this is how I'm going to feel when I go through menopause, that although they're common, they are not normal and they are signs that there are imbalances in the body that you really want to work on. First one's weight gain. And we're going to talk about all about the three reasons why women gain weight in perimenopause and menopause and what you can do to avoid that. But a lot of women feel like they hit menopause, they hit perimenopause, and all of a sudden they gain all this weight around their midsection and they can't lose it no matter what they do. They're trying to exercise, they're trying to diet, they're trying to do all the right things and the weight just will not move. And we love to blame it on menopause. Like, oh yeah, I gained that spare tire after menopause. Like, it's just what happens. It doesn't have to happen, right? That's not normal. It's common, but not normal. So weight gain is a big one. And we'll talk about what you can do about that. Hot flashes. Now, hot flashes in a mild form are indications that your hormones are fluctuating, okay? So having a little bit of temperature change as you fluctuate through perimenopause and menopause, that is normal. Your body's gonna give you signs that things are changing. So you might have a few mild hot flashes. That I consider normal. Hot flashes that are putting you out, that you're like drenched, that you can't feel like you can't go to work, you can't focus, that are keeping you up at night, that you can't sleep. Hot flashes in that magnitude mean that you don't have good support of your hormones. If they are that severe, there is absolutely something else going on. And we'll talk about things you can do, how to check what's going on for your hot flashes, but also some simple things you can do to start minimizing the intensity of your hot flashes. But really intense hot flashes are not normal. No matter what your friends and your mother and your grandmother tell you, if you're having them that badly, something else is going on. Low energy, just feeling like, oh, I got to this phase of life and I feel like it's so hard to do everything. Like I'm just don't have the energy or I don't have the motivation to do what I want to do anymore. That is not a normal part of menopause. That's an indication something else is going on. Mood swings, depression, feeling like your emotions are all over the place. I get a lot of women saying like, I feel like I could cry at the drop of the hat and then I want to scream right after that. And then I'm in a great mood and my husband doesn't know what to do with me because I never used to be the way my mood is. 
but now it's all over the place. That is not normal. That is a sign that your hormones are flying all over and you haven't supported them properly. So you should not be having dramatic mood changes going through perimenopause and menopause. If you are, we got a problem and we got to start fixing that. Um, low libido, tanked libido. We, I have women tell me all the time, well, since I went through menopause, I just don't have any libido and I just figure that's normal. That's actually not normal. A lot of women report actually getting better sexual function, feeling that they have a more stable libido when they healthily go through perimenopause and menopause. So fully losing your libido, completely running out of sex drive is not just a natural part of menopause and aging. That should not be happening. And that is a sign that we have other imbalances in the body. And then I've been hearing a lot of women saying that they only started developing digestive issues, constipation in particular, after menopause. That is not normal either. We need to have healthy, well-moving microbiome and GI, but there are some things hormonally that can be impacting the gut and the gut microbiome, creating those digestive issues. So if you have been told or you have heard that any of those things are normal, or you've just decided that that's part of the process, it's not. Those are not normal symptoms. They're common, but common does not mean normal. So let's dive into some of the things that can be causing that and how can you can either prevent before, manage it if you're already there, or even make up some groundwork if you are past, if you're in the postmenopausal phase, things you can continue to work on to get better balance. All right, let's start first. Let me check if we have any questions. Hey, we got lots of people jumping on. Hello, everybody. Menopause at 39. Yeah, we'll talk about what you should do now. Um, again, too young. That was definitely a hormone imbalance. And even if it was a hysterectomy or surgically induced, there's some things we would want to do to protect that. Okay. I'm going to pull up and share with you guys an example of a postmenopausal woman and what her hormones look like. So here is a 57 year old woman. And these are what her hormones look like. So first off, what's really important, and I'll walk you through these if it's hard to see the numbers, don't worry about that. But the way that we test hormones, it's called the Dutch test. They actually have a specific range for menopause, for perimenopause, and then for cycling females. That way, you know, regardless of the phase of life that you're in, exactly where the healthy range of hormones are for you in that range, right? We do not need to do more, but you certainly don't want to have less. So this woman, for example, the purple, just so you can see that a little bit better, this little purple bar at the bottom is menopausal and postmenopausal range. That means your entire life, whether you're 60, 70, 80, you should have at least that much estrogen and progesterone because they are highly important for a lot of different functions. So really important to understand estrogen deficiency, not having enough estrogen is actually for women one of the number one causes of heart disease, which is a big killer for women. Not having enough estrogen can create stroke. Not having enough estrogen has been linked to Alzheimer's and dementia. You need healthy amounts of estrogen. Now we don't want too much because then it could be linked to certain types of cancers, but you want the right amount, which is why I'm such a stickler about testing because if you don't know what your levels are, how do you know if you have too much and you need to bind it? How do you know if you have too little and you need to stimulate more production? You don't know unless you check your levels and making sure you're watching the ranges based on where you are in life. So for example, this woman, 57 years old, lots of menopausal symptoms, weight gain, mood changes. She was having lots of hot flashes. Her hair was falling out and her entire comment was, oh, well, this all happened through menopause. It happened to my mom too. So I just figure this is what it's supposed to be like. We run her labs and her estrogen is way below even where menopausal range should be, right? She has several points of that needs to climb up to get her in the nice healthy range for menopause. So that estrogen deficiency is causing the absolute changes in her mood. It's creating that weight gain. And I'll tell you why in just a second, but having no estrogen is actually really dangerous. You need good, healthy levels of estrogen. That alone is creating a lot of the symptoms that you're getting through menopause, perimenopause, and postmenopause. So knowing if you have a deficiency there is huge. On the other side, she actually has a little bit more progesterone than she needs. So she's fully in menopause and her progesterone is actually still up in perimenopause. 
So technically she's actually a little bit dominant in progesterone and deficient in estrogen. And then her testosterone is also slightly low. So looking at this, we can see based on her age, on her symptoms, on what things are going on in her body, how can we properly support and protect? And I'm going to give you a couple of examples for that. And then the second thing we see, we're going to talk a lot about how this is probably the most important thing for you to know in menopause is your adrenal pattern. Your adrenals control your hormones when your ovaries and your uterus do not. I will go into detail on that in just a second, but she had massive cortisol and stress hormone, which was creating inflammation, tanking her hormones. So adrenals in perimenopause and postmenopause is going to be the word you will hear me say the most often today. You need to have healthy adrenals to have a healthy transition through perimenopause and menopause. This is the Dutch test. It's my preferred way of testing adrenal function because it maps it over 24 hours. You get to see your entire adrenal pattern and you know what needs supporting to have the best hormones possible. She had way too much cortisol. Her adrenals were firing at a rapid rate, which was really contributing to her deficiency in some of those hormones. And then also actually making her have a little bit too much progesterone because progesterone is directly linked to cortisol and your adrenal glands. So those two things work together. So let's go into some detail. Hormones and adrenals are two of the three places that are two of the three ways that we make hormones. So in a female body, there are three total places that will make the most of our hormones. Now, some of it's made a little bit in other areas, but the three main areas, your entire life that make hormones, one, when you're in your cycling and perimenopausal ranges, the primary place you make your hormones is your ovaries and your uterus. When you transition into menopause, you stop making as much of it from your ovaries and your uterus. Or if you had a hysterectomy or a partial hysterectomy, you stop making as much hormone from your ovaries and your uterus, which means the second most important place takes over, which are your adrenal glands. So if you know you're in a phase of life or you've had a surgery where you are not making adequate hormone from your ovaries and your uterus, the next most important place for you to support is your adrenal glands because they are going to help make those hormones, which means, especially in menopause, your adrenals are perfectly capable if they're healthy of making enough hormone to keep you in that nice menopausal or postmenopausal range. Yet rarely do women know what their adrenal function is rarely prior to menopause, do they even think about balancing their adrenal function, I would bet that most of your symptoms you're having going into perimenopause and menopause are because you have an adrenal problem that you haven't addressed yet. That is probably the biggest and most important thing for you to start with. So number one, testing your adrenals multiple times in your life. They're going to look different when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50, when you're 60. These are things you want to get ongoing testing so that in that phase of life, you can properly support your adrenal glands. So I am going to drop a link below to the Dutch test that I'm going over today. Anyone who has not done a Dutch test, who has not mapped your hormones or your adrenal glands, this is the most important thing for you to do because I'm going to teach you a lot of cool stuff about natural ways you can support menopause. But if you don't even know your own levels yet, you don't know whether you have to take things to help increase hormone, or maybe you have to take things to help decrease hormone. Maybe you need adrenal stimulation. Maybe you need adrenal calming. You don't really know unless you get proper testing. So I highly encourage everyone step one get a Dutch test, know your hormone levels, know your adrenal pattern, and then you can make the best choices on what things you can do to support your body. Because here's the next part. Most of you, right? I would really say almost every woman has something going on with her adrenal glands because we're stressed, we're busy, we don't treat our bodies right. We have babies, we have businesses, we have things going on. So our adrenals are taxed, right? They're tired or they're not working properly. So if you're not making enough hormones from your ovaries and your uterus, if your adrenal glands aren't working properly, then we have one place left that makes hormones and that's our fat cells. So guess what? Why do you think your body puts on 20 pounds in perimenopause and menopause? Because your fat cells are the only place giving you hormones. 
if you don't make them from your ovaries and, and your um, a uterus and your ovaries and your adrenals aren't great, the only place left is your fat cells. So your body's going to say, hey, she needs more fat. She's not giving me any hormone. We've got to balance this. And you're going to put the weight on. And guess what? You can eat what you want. You can exercise all you want. If you don't fix the adrenals and the hormone balance, that weight is not going to budge. So if you're frustrated with weight gain and menopause, check your hormones, check your adrenals, let's fix those. And then your body will naturally start letting go of that weight. This is huge for a lot of you really frustrated with weight gain, low energy mood swings and menopause. Your adrenal glands are probably at the core of what is going on. So tell me in my comments, have you ever had your adrenal glands tested? Do you know what your adrenal pattern is? Most women, unless you're working with me, haven't. Rarely are those things tested. I'm going to tell you, it is the key to longevity, proper health, and proper hormone balance for women. So adrenals, adrenals, adrenals. You'll hear me say that probably a hundred times. Most important piece. And then there's your gut. Your gut and your liver, let's put those two things together. They are the place that converts majority of your hormones. So once your hormones are made from your ovaries and uterus or your adrenal glands or your fat cells, they then have to be converted and metabolized so they're properly used. Majority of that goes through the gut and the liver. So let's say you test your hormones. So if my hormones didn't look too bad, my adrenals looked okay, which is rare. I rarely get someone's Dutch test back if you're having symptoms, not to say everyone has imbalances, but if you come to me with hormone symptoms, there's probably a hormone imbalance, but let's say there's not, let's say your hormones look great. Let's say your adrenals look great and you're still experiencing these symptoms. The next most likely cause is that they're not being properly metabolized to the gut and through the liver. This can be from years of inflammation, potential yeast overgrowth. If you have even the beginnings of things like fatty liver, but even just the stress we put on our liver from inflammation or food choices, Perimenopause and menopause is also the most common time for a woman to develop things like prediabetes and diabetes, for her cholesterol to start elevating because your healthy hormone balance isn't helping anymore. Inflammation is built up in the gut and we don't have proper liver function. So it's not abnormal. It's not uncommon. It is abnormal. It's not uncommon for these metabolic conditions to really skyrocket in perimenopause and menopause. And again, not because it's your genetics, not because you're predestined to always have these conditions, but because the function of your adrenals and your liver and your gut have been slowly declining. You didn't correct them before transitioning into menopause. And now that your body's going through that big swing, it's not able to metabolize these things as well. So I highly recommend working on the gut, cleaning up the liver. Now, these are things that most people can start doing regardless. Hormones. I always need you to test that first, right? We need to know what your levels are. We need to know what your adrenals look like. That is incredibly important. Gut and liver cleanup, you can start that right away, right? We can start by making nutrition changes, decrease the amount of sugars and carbs that you're consuming, increase good nutritious vegetables, make sure you're getting enough water, um, simply adding things like milk thistle or dandelion root tea to help support the liver, doing a great liver gallbladder support so that your liver is able to properly metabolize your blood sugars, your triglycerides, your cholesterol, really making sure you have proper liver function is something every single person can do. Because even if your liver is not functioning poorly, you can always support it. There's never a reason not to support your liver. And the liver is one of the main causes of hot flashes especially if you're getting hot flashes at night between more of like that three and 4 a.m. that has a lot to do with your liver trying to convert hormones in the middle of the night. So supporting your liver could even help decrease that naturally. So some very simple liver supports that you can add. I have my top favorites. The first one is add something with desiccated liver, right? If you're trying to support a gland or a tissue, taking something that has the building blocks for that gland or tissue is the best way to get that. So a glandular complex or a liver glandular that will support your liver function. 
adding a good um, like liver gallbladder complex to help the actual bile salts in the gallbladder and the liver to help make sure that your liver can metabolize the hormones and the triglycerides properly. So a good liver support in addition to a liver glandular. And then the two things to help kind of stimulate the liver to detox better, my preferred ones are milk thistle and dandelion root. So if you're looking for a place to start and you don't know what your hormones and adrenals look like, start with supporting liver function. It converts most of your hormones. It helps with all of your blood sugar and metabolic issues, helps with cholesterol balance. I mean, there's so many benefits to really supporting your liver, but make sure you're not just taking supplements for it. You have to make the lifestyle changes. We are reducing our sugar intake. We're getting lots of hydration. We're making sure we're feeding our body good, nutritious food. And then you can use supplementation to help enhance those results. But especially when it comes to liver, lifestyle changes are incredibly important. So make sure that you're doing both of those. So supporting the liver, everyone can start there. And then really helping gut function. If you are not having daily bowel movements, daily, every single day, you should be going to the bathroom at least once, two to three times ideally, then you have a gut issue. You're not properly converting your hormones. And there's a lot of research linking a healthy microbiome to healthy menopause and vice versa, unhealthy microbiome, unhealthy hormone balance. So start working on digestive function. One of the simplest things you can do, I'll actually give you two tips for digestion. Short of if you have overgrowth and things that need to be addressed, you can start by adding organic aloe vera juice. It's very soothing to the GI tract. It helps just kind of get nice slippery, just like aloe vera kind of calms irritation on your skin. It will calm irritation in your gut and helps things slide through easier. So you can do anywhere from two ounces to half a cup of aloe vera juice a couple times a day to help stimulate bowel movements. That's a really simple change. Breathing, right? A lot of constipation is just not having oxygenation to the gut. Taking deep, full breaths, doing some breath work every day to stimulate more digestion is incredibly effective. And movement. If things aren't moving through your GI, you getting more movement will help stimulate that. Prioritize walking every single day, especially after meals. After you've eaten, go for a 10 or 15 minute walk to help things move through. Commit to doing that, even if it's just around your house for 10 minutes after every meal to get your bowels moving. Just having more normal bowel movements are going to help you balance your hormones better and help with some of those menopausal symptoms. So, so simple things that anyone can start doing. And I highly recommend at least starting there, liver and gut. And then getting your hormones checked, you need to know what those levels look like. Tell me, so look at the comments. Um, perfect. We have some people doing their hormone and adrenal testing. It's been a while. If it's been a while since you've had them, it's definitely time to do them again. These are ever changing and adapting. I try and do my Dutch test every one to two years just to kind of check in on things, see where everything's at so that I can support myself properly. Again, I'll put the link for you to purchase the Dutch test in the comments if you're interested in seeing what your hormones and your adrenals look like. Um, the cost of the Dutch test also includes a test read appointment with one of my doctors. So you'll get the test, but you'll also get a one-on-one -on -one review of your results so they can help you with your next steps. Hugely important. The most important thing you can do as a woman is know your hormones and know your adrenals. And then lastly, I wanna talk about some of the other things that happen in menopause that, so we talked about heart disease, making sure that your estrogen is balanced. That's a big thing. We talked about Alzheimer's and dementia, having deficient hormones and abnormal adrenal function are tied to reasons why women develop those conditions later on in life. And then lastly is osteopenia and osteoporosis. Now having weak bone density or having bone density issues has a lot to do with hormones, specifically your estrogen. So estrogen levels, normal estrogen levels, keep good calcium inside the bones. When we have deficient hormones or too much inflammation, those are one of the reasons the body will start leaching calcium from the bones to help produce more hormone or also to help reduce inflammation in the body. So healthy hormone balance is also great for preventing or protecting against bone issues. The other thing that becomes really important in perimenopause and menopause is doing light weight bearing exercises. You have to be doing some type of exercise that has some weight component to it 
to help with bone density. So even if it's just a few pounds of weights, you really want to make sure you're working on weight bearing exercise, keeping your hormones balanced and keeping your inflammation low, because those are the three main culprits to why your bones are starting to lose density in the first place. And then a lot of people want to supplement, right? I hear so many women, especially menopause, taking calcium supplements for their bones. And even though I know we're taught that it's preached all the time, calcium is actually not the main thing you need when it comes to bone health. You have plenty of calcium. It's making sure it's staying in the bones and not getting leached out of the bones. And taking calcium by itself can actually get stuck in your tissues, in your blood vessels, in your arteries, and can create placking and other issues. So you want to be really careful just taking a calcium supplement. So I much prefer balance your hormones, take a good high quality vitamin D. Vitamin D in bone health is actually more important than calcium, but making sure if you're perimenopausal or menopausal that your D has both K1 and K2. Most of them nowadays only have K2. That's better than nothing at all. But when you are postmenopausal and you really need that, the, the actual vitamin D to get in the bones, you want both K1 and K2. I'll drop a link to that one below. So you don't want to take vitamin D on its own. You don't want to take calcium on its own. You want to make sure they're paired with K1 and K2. In addition to making sure you have healthy levels of estrogen and doing those weight bearing exercises, those are your best protection against losing bone density. So if you know you have a history of that in your family, I highly recommend you start implementing those changes right away as prevention, and then continue to check in on your bones and see what needs to be added or changed as you go. But those are really simple things anyone can start with right away as well. And then let's talk lastly, I'm giving you guys so much information today. I hope you're taking notes. Um, some of my favorite herbs specifically for menopause. Now I'm going to tell you which ones do what, but unless you know your levels, these are probably not things I want you to start. Liver support, you can start right away. Gut support, you can start right away. Bone support, you can start right away. Those are safe for everybody. Hormone support, you have to know your levels, right? I'm a stickler about that. So in general, there's only one kind of hormone and adrenal support that I recommend ongoing for everybody. And that's ashwagandha. So my favorite form of ashwagandha, it's called powerful. I can drop the link below to that as well. Ashwagandha is just a nice, gentle support for hormones and adrenals. It's the only thing you can start with if you don't know what your hormones look like. So that's a great general start. Now, a lot of women, when they're looking at getting their hormones balanced, I'll often have people say, but I don't want to do hormone replacement right? And I totally get that. I personally don't recommend hormone replacement. There's a lot of doctors who feel like that still has a time and a place. That's their opinion. I do not suggest synthetic hormone replacement pretty much for anybody, but there are lots of different levels of natural hormone support. So I do use some plant-based bioidenticals if the body needs it. If your hormones are so deficient that you need a little bit of heavier support, there are some beautiful plant-based bioidenticals that we can add if that's relevant for you. But a lot of women do really well with just herbal support. So if you have a history of cancer, if you have a family history of cancer, if you have any reasons, um, different stroke issues that you cannot do hormone support, you can still do some of these natural herbal remedies to support without stimulating too much hormone. So again, no matter your history, there will always be something you can do to support your hormones. And it doesn't have to be hormone replacement therapy. For example, if you have deficient estrogen, a really beautiful herb to help stimulate estrogen production is called Dong Kwai. It's been used for centuries. It's really helpful. It's generally well tolerated by most people and it helps stimulate your estrogen production. So low estrogen and not wanting to use any type of hormones Don Kwai is great for that. If you have deficient progesterone and you don't want to use hormones or bioidenticals, Chase Tree, which is also known as Vitex, is a really great stimulator for progesterone. So Don Kwai and Chase Tree, completely natural, all herbal, no hormones. Those would be things that could be used to stimulate your hormones. Um, things like black cohosh and primrose, uh, primrose oil, those have been used for a long time. I go back and forth. They're not my first line that I typically recommend only because I feel like they're beneficial for some people, 
Other people don't feel like they get as much of a benefit when they try them. They're not necessarily dangerous, but they're not on my top of the list. I would use Dong Quai or Chase Tree first. Um, and then there's some other really great support for adrenal glands, licorice root. If you have weak or deficient adrenal glands, licorice root helps your body continue to circulate free cortisol so you can get more energy as your adrenal glands really get back to proper function. And they're all really natural, safe things to use for most people. However, do not start them without seeing your labs. But I just wanted to outline that there's so many options for hormone balance. There's hormone replacement, not my choice. There's really good, clean versions of bioidenticals. Some bioidenticals still have a lot of toxins in them, especially if you're getting them from the pharmacy. They usually have other compounds and toxins added. If you read the ingredient list, there's usually parabens and um, all kinds of other chemicals added. So I would be really careful choosing your source of bioidenticals, but a good, clean plant-based bioidentical is a wonderful support. And then we have lots of other herbal and natural remedies to use as well. So if you've been nervous about doing any type of hormone support because you didn't want to do hormones, there is a gamut of things that you can choose from to help get that support. So step one, get your testing. And then step two is finding the right support that fits right for your body and what you're looking for. So I know that was a lot. I'm going to come back and answer questions after I get off here so that uh, I can end and let you guys go about your day. But I hope you learned something that was really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to menopause. There's so many intricacies and things that we can go deeper into, but as a woman, all of us will go through this at some point. If you haven't already start educating yourself, prepping your body in every phase is so important and don't wait till the symptoms hit. If you can stay balanced your whole life, you will have less of those issues that pop up as you go through that, tra that transition in life. So my best advice to you is start wherever you're at, whatever age you're at, it is never too late to support your hormones, support your adrenals, support your liver, support your gut, make sure you're doing the right things physically for your body so that you can stay vibrant and healthy and loving life at any age. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys next week.